So it starts. I hi. I'm uh, Pavan. I'm one of the PhD students of uh, Dr. Amit Sheth. I think most of you here uh, would know me, and uh, and hence most of you here would also know my talk. So if anybody has questions, please interrupt me. Uh, feel free to interrupt me. I love interruptions, and that's what even I do generally. So uh, today I'll be talking about uh, semantic filtering. Uh, quite a bit of the content, or at least uh, something similar stuff, the sea sparkle and other things was covered by them. Uh, I'll be talking uh, another application which does uh, a little similar, which we, uh, which we actually developed in 2010 uh, with Pablo. Pablo is in IBM research at this point of time. So Emmanuel told, you know, the streams are everywhere. That's something. Uh, if they haven't convinced you by now, uh, it's too late for me to convince you. Uh, in that case, it's better for all of you to stay confused about it. Uh, so a lot of social data, a uh, lot of social streams, text, vi images, videos, uh, and uh, sensor data. So the, what uh, we need to do with these things is uh, we are trying to process each of this data for some application or the other. Uh, mainly, I'll be talking about uh, the social data. There was a similar image which Emmanuel sh showed yesterday. A uh, lot of content is being generated uh, every minute, around 433,000. I think that's increased. Uh, tweets are being generated every minute, which will come up to probably around uh, 500 million tweets per day. Uh, this is a lot of information for any machine to process. Or if you have to process any event or any kind of topics, you really need to filter these tweets. And uh, we, we cannot really know what's, what's complete or whether the tweets are precise, what we are trying to process for uh, any application. right? Uh, the other uh, nice quote which I read was, uh, if you are talking about information overload, it's not information overload. It's the failure of filtering which matters. So that's uh, exactly what we need to do. right? Uh, this is from uh, Clay Shirky. He's, uh, he's actually an American writer on internet. Uh, Dr. Sheth would have spoken quite a bit yesterday. I think uh, the last uh, talk yesterday about Twitteris and what kind of stuff Twitteris is doing. Uh, I'll as far as I know, uh, it's being used for these three main causes. One is for disaster management, which is the Hazard Seas project. The other one is uh, uh, the depression, which uh, is an NIH project. e -drug trends, I again forgot to change the D there. You did mention to me. But uh, e -drug trends and the harassment project. All these, uh, all these projects are using tweets. Right? Each project has uh, different uh, different requirements for the kind of data it needs. It might be Hazard Seas is basically looking at disaster management, so we need tweets for disasters. Harassment is looking at uh, how people are harassing others on Twitter, so you need, you need to really find tweets which are, you know, quote unquote, harassing other people. So, so all these. Um, um, uh, Emmanuel had a very good set of complex event um, examples in his slides, right? you remember that, right? One of his early slides today. That's okay. a scary question. Yeah. Okay, I remember. Okay. Care or not? But it's going to take a detour, my class. <laughs> but uh, but I would like uh, you know if you can if possible it would be good if you can um, put in that framework. Meaning it is not that simple. Our questions that we are we are framed right. for each domain model are the complex human questions. Okay, mm. I'll I'll look into it. No, no, For the next talk, I'll frame it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yep, uh, the, the, kind, the requirements for each of these uh, projects are different in terms of the kind of tweets we filter. And uh, if we don't filter the right, uh, right tweets for each of these projects, we'll face a problem uh, in terms of the kind of analysis we are doing. We might go haywire with our analysis. Um, I'll give you an example. For a harassment uh, project, if we start uh, you know, getting tweets of Hazard Seas, or which is a disaster management uh, uh, project, you know, you're, you don't know what analysis you're doing. So, 
that that is exactly the reason we need filtering, right? And uh, here, uh, uh, the, this is one of the images I found online where you try to process something and get the right thing what you want to eat, right? So that's exactly what we want to do. You know, we need to filter the right stuff what we want to analyze. Basically, if you have noise in your data, whatever you analyze, analyze will be bad. And if you leave out some of the important data, again, your analysis will be incomplete. Right. So whatever I miss, he will fill it in. So <laughs> uh, Good, no? Yeah, yeah, that's Good perfect, point. right? Uh, no, it is the, uh, it's the precise and pithiness uh, you know, of, of the words chosen. Uh, is it recording? I think we should stop it. It's 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 more. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay. Who's who's editing it? I want that person. <laughs> huh? Oh, probably me. <laughs> oh, I think I should pick up that uh, job. Yeah, I'll I'll be safe on online, right? I won't be kind of uh, partially insulted. So, uh, <laughs> so. Yes, understanding the requirements and utilizing semantics for filtering is uh, really important. I think I have tried to give a motivation towards why we why we were doing it, and uh, I think we have this for a reason. Would this work for me? Yeah. Where is the USB? No, no. no. <laughs> oh, nice. I more and more feel like a professor than a computer scientist because I don't know to use anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to see. Look at the screen, but I I think here also it should change, right? Yeah, yeah. I should tell you something. Suppose that other way. Yeah, but still. Okay. And is it on? Yes, it is. It is. It is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, it's in installing the desired uh, device okay. driver. So. <laughs> it's uh, it's fun. Uh, okay. We worked on two different projects. One is uh, Twarkle, which is what, which is very similar to. Uh, kind of the C-Sparkle engine. Uh, you try to infer something about the data. I'll talk about it. And the other one is uh, continuous semantics. Uh, not exactly in the terms what uh, Emmanuel spoke. Uh, it is more about, uh, I think, Dr. Sheth and Topher. Topher is an al alumni. They came up with the concept of continuous semantics, where you have to filter data which is dynamically changing. I'll, uh, I'll get to it soon. And uh, is this working yet now? No. Uh, the first thing, Twarkle. Uh, it's uh, it's a system which will try to improve the recall of uh, Twitter data. I'll tell you what I mean by uh, recall at this point of time uh, by, with an example. There's a journalist who wants to track uh, healthcare debate in United States on social media, right? Uh, for a person like this, uh, you need some kind of a filtering system. One of the simplest thing what Twitter has provided is. Uh, to use keywords, right? Probably he'll put up uh, healthcare reform as a, as a keyword, and he'll get these tweets. However, uh, if you just look at some some knowledge base, for example, Wikipedia, you'll get to know that healthcare reform is also kind of, is also related to Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare, right? If a, if a journalist wants to get all the tweets of healthcare reform. It's good for us to also give tweets of Obamacare. That's exactly what we try to do with Parkle, try to get the related stuff for a particular topic. And uh, we get the tweets of Obamacare, which is also related to healthcare reform. Right? How do we do this? This is the architecture of Twarkle. Uh, again, I'll uh, repeat it. This is the work which we did, which we did in 2010. Uh, we perform we perform some processing. The good part is at least yeah this works. So we perform some processing on the Twitter stream in real time for 
extracting all the data from Twitter. We annotate it using RDF, and we have a Sparkle engine. Once we annotate it in RDF, you can put up your own queries on the Sparkle engine, which will provide the data, which will provide the relevant data for you. Right? How do we perform the extraction? What all, what all information do we get when you perform the extraction? These are uh, the entities. If you consider this tweet, Apple iPad, tablet, or iPad. So these are all the entities which you can get. Oh, why did I miss that? OK. And uh, you also have a lot of metadata what Twitter gives by itself, right? I think most of us here, quite a few of us here work on Twitter. Oh, no, and uh, it's the color which is a uh, which is pretty significantly different from yeah, but, uh, here. Contrast, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Twitter provides a lot of the metadata in terms of who is the person tweeting it and from where is he tweeting it, but what is the home location of the person, so his friends, followers, with all these uh, information and the information extracted from tweets, for example, uh, the entities, the URLs, the hashtags, we process all these things and uh, put it up as RDF. And that, that would be the RDF streams, what probably the C Sparkle engine would also use. Right? You, you want a stream on which you can do some reasoning. Using this, uh, this, this would be the RDF annotation process. We use FOF, Shark, and uh, OPO, and MOT. Uh, I'm, I'm just remembering. Do I know all? Do I know the abbreviations of all of these things? Yep, I do. So we use these, and uh, we annotate the whole tweets with its metadata. And once we do that, uh, we filter it. Right? For filtering, you need to give some kind of a Sparkle query. Right? So, for example, consider this. Right? You're registering a stream called Healthcare Ohio, and you're saying that, give me all the tweets from a particular user tagged with the entity which is related to healthcare. From one hop of that particular healthcare entity, it will start providing you tweets which mentions all the entities which are from this particular hop. And oh, yeah, which, um, which, if, which is from Ohio, right? Uh, Probably I'll get to the demo a little later, uh, because it's already around 15 minutes from the time we have started. I'll have to cover another work of ours. So this is the, dom uh, this is the demo of Twarkle. It's just a video, so you can look up on it later. I'll, the slides are on SlideShare anyway. Hmm. Whose water is this? I don't know. OK. The next work. Uh, for people from Noasis, this is very much similar to the work which I explained in my proposal. The other issue with streaming data is that it's dynamically changing. Right? Most, of the, most of the tweets which we put up on Twitter are based on some kind of events or the other. Right? It might be a very personalized event, like somebody is going to the bathroom, or somebody is having lunch, or it might be a bigger event like, you know. U.S. presidential elections, or, uh, uh, or Arab Springs, or Indian elections, some disasters like Hurricane Sandy. Another information about Hurricane Sandy is a lot of processing is done. A lot of Twitter analysis uh, is done. Thanks. A lot of Twitter analysis has been done on Hurricane Sandy data. There were, there were around 20 million uh, tweets uh, for the seven days of Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy was in, I think it was in 2011. Dr. Shit, Hurricane Sandy, 12? 11. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Uh, that range of dates, there were around 20 million st uh, tweets tweeted about Hurricane Sandy. And uh, those tweets were also used for 
by disaster management people, right? Uh, have they got all the tweets? Are the 20 million all the tweets? We really don't know. So, and uh, during that hurricane, things changed a lot. You know, it started down south and then came up to New York and then Massachusetts, Canada. So, and things were quite evolving on it. It hit Manhattan and some of the sub events where there was a crane in Manhattan which broke down and people were really scared what's happening. People started tweeting about all these things. And if you are just looking for uh, tweets with, uh, for Hurricane Sandy which mentioned Sandy, probably you'll miss a lot of tweets which are on the sub events. That's similar to any elections, US elections. Now there are new nominations coming up. Uh, the last four months or five months, new nominations came up. There are new people being involved. If you start uh, looking for tweets only with a keyword election, probably you'll miss uh, the rest of the tweets which are mentioning other people in it. Right? How can we keep track of these is what we'll be looking at. You know. Uh, continuously evolve, uh, uh, events are continuously evolving on Twitter, and as I mentioned, many entities are involved. Another example for this, right? Uh, we, we started tracking tweets for Arab Springs, especially the Egypt protests, and we got to know that uh, we can start crawling for Jan 25th. That is when it started, and that was a pretty prominent uh, hashtag being used to get tweets for Arab Springs. Similarly, for Indian elections. How do you identify, once you started looking for Egypt uh, uh, unrest, how do you identify that Jan 25 is now suddenly a very prominent hashtag uh, through, that people use to share information about uh, Egypt unrest? Yes, that is one of the things. And the other thing is, these uh, each of these keywords evolve, right? As um, I mentioned to you that there are new people coming in and there are new things happening, Egypt, Arab Spring, or in Indian elections, you start with Indian election and you know that Modi, BJP, Congress, these are the, uh, these are the entities involved. That's the same case with uh, Hurricane Sandy. Our question is how can we automatically update the set of keywords so we can filter relevant tweets over time? Uh, the most simplest thing for us to do, uh, probably, go to hashtags. Hashtags represent a topic on Twitter. right? So that's exactly what I try to do. Tweets with hashtags are more informative, and uh, users generally have a lot of freedom to create it. A lot of, quite a few hashtags get really popular for an event, and but most of them actually die down because very less people use it. So what we try to do is, we analyzed how these hashtags behave over time on Twitter. So we picked up two events. This is kind of a hindsight analysis. Get the tweets of two events, analyze how these hashtags evolve over time, whether we can find some kind of behavior which we can utilize for new events to start crawling about it. Right? So we picked up two events. One is the Colorado shooting, uh, and the other one is Occupy Wall Street. Colorado. These two are pretty contrasting because uh, this is a very small event, whereas Occupy Wall Street was a pretty big event. It went on for a long time. And you can see with the number of tweets we collected for it. Colorado shooting, it was around 100,000 tweets, whereas Occupy Wall Street was around 6, uh, six million tweets. We got to know that all these uh, tweets can be crawled using 7,000 hashtags and 21,000 hashtags for Occupy Wall Street. What I mean by these 7,000 hashtags is, pick up those hashtags which was the most popular in these tweets, and then see how many, how much, how many tweets can this particular hashtag crawl. To take a step back, these tweets were crawled by manually adding keywords, right? Over time, on Twitter, people started manually adding keywords to it, and they crawled. But we are working on hashtags, so we wanted to see how these hashtags behave, and we got around 7,800 uh, hashtags which can crawl the whole 120,000 tweets, and 21,000 can get the whole 6 million tweets. Right? Uh, and uh, these hashtags follow a power law. When you look at the frequency of these hashtags, 
very few of them uh, are spoken about a lot and a lot of them you know are spoken once or twice on it right and uh, if you look at the top 1% of these hashtags they can get around 85% of the tweets so we stopped focusing on the rest of them and we thought okay let's focus on the top 1% if we get that automatically that's good enough we'll get 85% of the tweets what people crawled yeah, adding it manually then for a small uh, event like ours things you need uh, to get uh, 75 or so hashtags and um, it is uh, humanly you know not convenient or almost impossible to manually come up with all the 80 percent so how do you actually uh, you know uh, have the system software help you identify those uh, 75 or so hashtags uh, to even get the one percent uh, 85 percent of the tweets uh, for that uh, we looked at how these hashtags go occur the simplest thing what we can do is okay there is a particular hashtag which we know that is related to the event. How does the other hashtags go occur with it? Multiple, generally people add multiple hashtags. Uh, on an average, I think there are two or three hashtags added on tweets per tweet, right? So we looked at this co-occurrence and we found that uh, they co-occur pretty well. The top hashtags, which can get us 85% of the tweets, co-occur with each other pretty well. So if you look at co-occurrence, then we'll probably fetch, starting with one of the event relevant hashtags, by co-occurrence, we can reach the other relevant hashtag. So we got to know this. The next question we had was, uh, if you just look at co-occurrence, start one, one hashtag, we'll get a lot of noise. We, will, we know that these event relevant hashtags co-occur. But in real world, if we start using co-occurrence, we will surely find a lot of noise there. So uh, we had to find the dynamic relevance of the co-occurring hashtag to the event. What I mean by that is, here we started with hash election 2015. We know that there's another hashtag, Modi ki sarkar. For people who don't know about Indian elections, uh, uh, Modi was one of the prime ministerial candidate for, uh, during Indian elections. So if that hashtag we get to know that as co occurred how will we find out the relevance of that hashtag to the event is what we look at now. So that's very important for us to filter noise. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so what we did for that, now we, we get to know that there is a co-occurring hashtag, so we pick up around 200 latest tweets we uh, spot entities in those tweets, and we score them based on normalized frequency. So that'll give us a representation of the tweets, what the particular hashtag would get for us. Right? If you want to add that to our stream, what would those tweets, what would that hashtag, what kind of tweets would that hashtag get us? Right? Now, this representation should be compared to something which will talk about the event for us. This is the ha hashtag representation. We need some representation for, a, for the event which we want to crawl. So this is the starting hashtag, which is about the event, which we really know that it is about the event. This is a new hashtag. Automatically, we have come up based on the uh, co-occurrence. We have its representation. We want to compare this to the event. So we picked up Wikipedia. Right? Uh, Wikipedia has a lot of these event pages. For example, this is Indian elections and Arab Spring. People on Wikipedia automatically, in real time, update based on whatever is happening. It's not as fast as it is on Twitter, but people do update. Right? And uh, when we look at these, Wikipedia pages, there are entities mentioned in them. Right? This is the Indian election page, and uh, UPA or INC, uh, these are all the parties the, which, are, which are participating in the elections. Right? And these are all the candidates from those parties. Right? So you have information on Wikipedia about the event. How, well, our, our thinking is how can we utilize this
to find the relevance of a hashtag. Right. So we transform that particular Wikipedia page into a graph. To tell you what this graph contains, this is the uh, Wikipedia page. And each of the entities mentioned in the Wikipedia page becomes a node on the graph. right? And a link is, a directional link is when the entity is mentioned in the other Wikipedia page. right? So we have a one-hop hyperlink graph for that particular event page. So you can find that here, right? So we get the event Wikipedia page, and we get a one-hop uh, hyperlink graph for that event Wikipedia page. What we need to do now is to transform this Wikipedia page to exactly a representation of entities, so we can compare the hashtag to the event. Right. Uh, the other reason for us to use Wikipedia is our motivation for this work. We told that events are dynamic in nature, so it keeps changing over time. Indian elections, they, I think in 2013, they put up Modi as the prime ministerial candidate, so that's a new event which came up. And there was a list of uh, states in India which had elections in different times, so those are new events. So we have to track all these things. And we expect uh, Wikipedia to keep track of it. And that's what happens on Wikipedia too. 10th May 2010 was when the, when the Wikipedia page was created. And uh, 29th March 2013 was when these entities, Indian National Congress, UPA, NDA, and BJP were added on the Wikipedia page. And Modi and uh, Rahul Gandhi was added on 20th May 2013. So this particular Wikipedia page is evolving over time. So we can actually use this and update uh, as a dynamic knowledge source. Right? We have this. We know that it's being updated, in, uh, updated whenever things happen. So we take the hyperlink graph and transform it into a representation of entities. I will, OK, I'll go ahead and explain this too. So there are two measures which we use. One is the edge-based measure, and the other one is the link overlap measure. Uh, it's uh, pretty simple. Edge-based measure is we have a hyperlink graph. If there is a bidirectional edge, that means both of these entities are mentioned in each other's Wikipedia page. We think it's pretty important. And uh, if it is not mentioned in each other page, if it is a unidirectional page, we don't think it's that important. So we give an empirical score there. And uh, so we are doing what we are doing is we are calculating the uh, importance of Narendra Modi for Indian general election. So we use a link overlap measure based on the entities in the Wikipedia page of Narendra Modi and Indian general election. We find a Jakarta coefficient there. That just gives kind of a semantic similarity uh, for both of these uh, entities. And uh, we sum up to find the score. Using those measures, now what we, what we have is uh, uh, a representation of the event with the Wikipedia page, sorry, with a list of entities and its scores. Right. We uh, find the similarity between these two, then we'll get, we'll get to know how well Modi ki Sarkar is actually related to an event. Uh, for the similarity measure, we used three different similarity measures uh, for our experiments. One is Jacquard, uh, which just considers it's a set-based similarity measure. We used uh, cosine, that is uh, a vector-based similarity measure, but uh, it's symmetric. And we used an asymmetric uh, similarity measure. And uh, I'll probably skip the slide. Once we use that, uh, we evaluated our approach. We evaluated using US elections and Hurricane Sandy. Uh, these were the two events which we picked up in real time. We started with the, the first uh, hashtag we started with was hash election 2012 for US elections. The other one was hash Sandy. We found 25 top co-occurring hashtags, and we saw how well they are ranked by our approach. Mm. 
uh, we got an NDCG. NDCG is an evaluation metric for ranking. We got an NDCG of 92% at top five hashtags. That means, uh, let me put it up this way, right? With those uh, top 25, the 25 hashtags with hash election 2012, what we get is the top five, if we manually see, we'll get 96% of the tweets which are relevant, right? If we manually look at which hashtags are the best relevant, we'll get 96% of them. With our approach, we got 92% of uh, the relevant tweets through the top five hashtags using, using our approach. If we would have just used co-occurrence, we would have got 80%. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, we started with hash election 2012, and uh, we got around 5,000 tweets. We got some hashtags which we thought were relevant, and these hashtags are able to get around uh, 10,000 tweets. And out of those 10,000 tweets, the top five hashtags were able to get probably around 2,500 of those 10,000 tweets. How many of these hashtags, how many of these tweets were relevant is what we are looking at here, right? So automatically, if we get the top five hashtags, we, we were able to get 92% of the tweets through those which were relevant to the event, right? So what we saw here in this talk was, we used semantic technologies. The first one was Twarkle, where we tried to broaden the scope uh, using uh, the background knowledge uh, to get more information. The second one was, how can we keep up with the relevant information? We saw that Wikipedia is dynamically changing over time. Hence, our knowledge base would dynamically change to keep track of the events using hashtags. Right? Uh, any questions? 32 minutes.